Well, my friends, it's time. You are about to witness one of the most spectacular sequences of moves that you have probably seen in a chess game that does not involve your 200 ELO friend. Hikaru here sacrifices first the knight, brilliant move number one. The idea of this sacrifice is that after f takes e4, rook f1 check cannot be taken because it's checkmate, and if king g2, the king is brutally hunted out with a sequence of moves. So knight takes e4, but no problem, Wesley's just not going to take the knight. Well, that's too bad Wesley's not going to take the knight, because in this position, after sacrificing his knight, Hikaru is going to sacrifice, you guessed it, the rook! Rook takes f3, two brilliant moves! And there's four more to go. This dude just played back-to-back -back more brilliant moves than you'll probably see in your entire life. And this man's got four more to go. He ain't done. Rook f3 can't be taken because queen f3 can't block. Take the rook. King g1. Bishop b3. Here, it's mate very soon. <coughs> rook f3. Two. Now Wesley takes the bishop. <coughs> the most incredible thing about the move rook takes f3 is that not only are you sacrificing a knight, and a rook, you're also sacrificing a bishop. There is just a purely hanging bishop here, and Wesley takes it, and is now up three points of material. But that's great, because if you didn't take my rook when it was on f3, certainly you might take it when it's on f1. Three brilliant moves. Cannot be taken. King to g2. And in this position, with now the bishop staring straight down at the rook and the king, Hikaru plays bishop to e3. Four brilliant moves. The idea of bishop e3 is setting up rook g1 check, and the bishop cannot actually take the rook, because if it does, pawn sneaks in. Only option is to go here. Queen f3 check, and knight g5. Done. Call the coroner. Four brilliant moves. Bishop g3. Everything is staring at everything else. Wesley is trying to sacrifice material. Now, <clears throat> obviously, Hikaru cannot take on g3 because then the rook would take and then the attack would be kind of stopped. So instead of h takes g3, Hikaru played h takes g3. Five brilliant moves. Five and one more to go. What is the idea? Well, this is the idea, folks. This is the idea, because after rook takes f1, now that the pawn moves off of the h4 square, knight h4 check, king comes out, <clears throat> and now it's time for the walk of shame. Queen h6. This man, Hikaru, is down five points of material. I would argue he's down ten. This rook hasn't even moved. This rook hasn't even moved yet. The only way for Wesley to avoid getting checkmated here in a variety of brutal fashions is to play g5. Knight takes g5, and now king to g4. And folks, you might ask yourself, where are the six brilliant moves? You've only showed me five. If you thought Hikaru was in the business of sacrificing only bishops and rooks, no. Knight f3. With the idea that if you take the knight, swift execution. What a checkmate on h3. And if you take the knight with the rook, the same thing. And the other thing is, I now completely block all of your pieces. I am just threatening this. You have a few ways of, of getting out of this situation. You can play knight to f2. And now, Hikaru ends the game with utmost precision by playing queen to h4 check, king to f5, and the rook gets a turn. Rook f8 check, king to g6. He sacrifices the rook again. King takes f6, double check with the knight and the queen, king g6, queen g5, check, mate. Aren't you glad you watched the entire game? This man, Hikaru, played h4 and then proceeded to play f3, knight e4. Rook f3, rook f1, bishop e3, hg, walk the king out to the edge of the board, sacrifice the knight, and what a journey for the white king, brutalized in the most egregious of fashions, what a win.